Have you ever had one of those times where a game genuinely takes over your entire mind? Time falling away, the hours ticking by as you re-emerge to find, hey, it's 3am, I should probably go do something other than trying to beat God of War in one sitting. Because there's something about video games being a constantly active medium, a setup that requires at least enough attention to progress the story through engagement and button presses, that can create a state of pure symbiosis. Sometimes I'll find myself thinking of entirely different things. All while grinding through an open world or mopping up side quests, my brain planning what to do after I've felled some giant boss with three faces. All of this represents the power of being connected to incredibly emotive and viscerally engaging entertainment. And as games have come to depict more realistic scenarios or emotive imagery, we too can get drawn in way more than ever before. For all sorts of reasons, video games can really burrow their way into our psyches, and the fallout can be everything from fascinating to horrifying, and everything in between. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 9 times gaming was too real. Number 9. Getting stabbed in VR and feeling it PSVR is in the weirdest spot right now. Regarded as something of a gimmick by the majority of players thanks to only having a handful of titles worth dropping 300 notes on, the reality of playing is that the technology is there and sometimes it can really take you over. Mainly down to our brain's sensory perception relying so heavily on visuals, if a 3D effect is done well enough, your cerebellum will make up the groundwork between digital and reality. To quote Morpheus from the first Matrix, if you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Case in point, anything where a character interacts with your fake body in VR. For me, it came from PSVR Worlds, where in the London Heist game, an angry gangster betrays someone and stabs you right in the stomach. Although I thought I knew I was playing a game, my brain totally registered the hit, and I felt a slight stinging pain, instinctively reaching for the area itself. That is the power of VR, and whether you're playing PSVR Worlds or something like the opening sequences of Resident Evil 7, these sorts of scenarios can lead to some really unexpected sensations. Number 8. People almost killing themselves playing Pokemon Go Right alongside the applications of virtual reality is augmented reality, and the fact that once Pokemon Go made us all feel like real-world Pokemon trainers, we were as dedicated as Ash Ketchum himself when a new creature showed up. This was evident more than ever back in 2016, where only a couple of weeks after the game had dropped, a sighting of a rare Charizard appeared in New York City's Central Park, resulting in a mass migration of trainers all to one spot. The level of dedication didn't stop there though, as stories sprang up left, right and centre of people almost killing themselves in pursuit of catching them all. Tragically, a teenager was actually shot and killed in Guatemala for entering some premises without permission. Whereas other people were severely injured after falling off cliffs, and another totaled their car trying to play while driving. All of those be aware of your surroundings warnings, they weren't just there for fun. Number 7. That tunnel vision effect from rhythm games there was a time when the plastic instrument was king, and after Guitar Hero dropped on western shores and unleashed our inner rock star, it kicked off a whole plastic instrument arms race. Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Band Hero, Rocksmith, Power Gig, Rise of the Six String, these things were everywhere for the close of the 2000s, and we lapped them all up. Only actually devoting any meaningful chunk of time to staring at a series of markers moving up the screen resulted in a specific type of visual hangover. That of looking away only to see life itself turn into the opening Star Wars crawl, like the notes on each game's highway. Maybe this happened to you, maybe it didn't. To me and my friends, this Guitar Hero fatigue was very, very real, and symbolized the precise time you'd been living the plastic stage life just that little bit too long. Number 6. A child spending £3,160 on microtransactions time for something far darker and way more manipulative, as we all know the potential power of microtransactions. Whether you came upon them in mobile games or saw them creep into something like Assassin's Creed over time, there's always the holy sh** realization that tens of thousands of people all giving in to tiny purchases quickly starts to rake in the dough. Ease of access is a major factor too. Once an app or game has stored your credit card info, all it takes is the tap of a button to very quickly rack up a number of purchases. You can just imagine a scenario where some click-happy player opts in for every last item, most likely using virtual currency, never really worrying about the total expenditure in real cash. This has been the case with many parents uncovering their children's spending habits. One example written up by the BBC highlighted a 22-year-old with learning difficulties and the mental faculties of a 7-year-old spending over £3,000 in FIFA's Ultimate Team Mode. Other stories came of £2,000 being spent in EA's NBA Live Mobile Basketball and £700 being dropped in Clash of Clans. 
For as much as the legal definition of gambling requires a wager on behalf of the player, this loophole is clearly being exploited to prey on younger gamers or those vulnerable to what are clearly wagering mechanics designed to exploit across the board. Number 5. Really caring about killing Edgar Ross in Red Dead Redemption Back to in-game stuff as never have I ever cared about avenging an in-game character so much as the close of Red Dead Redemption. Yes, the sequel has its charms too and I will get to them very soon, but the first Red Dead ends in such a monumentally powerful way, there's not a soul among us who didn't get genuinely suckered into gunning Edgar Ross down. Coming right at the close of the main story, protagonist John Marston has forever been trying to earn back his own life. On the run from the law for who knows how long, a deal is then struck with Agent Edgar Ross. Round up the remaining members of Dutch's gang and you, John Marsden, can go free. Cut to the close of the game. The deed is done, but Ross's men come anyway, gunning John down in a haze of blood and bullets. It's here where control switches to son Jack Marsden. And besides it being a jarring change of personality and swagger, Work you, there, Nick. you head off to Blackwater to find word of Ross's last location. Because if there was any one thing you were going to do, it's avenge dear old dad. Thankfully, the game lets you, and as Edgar Ross's body bobs off down the river, there has never been a feeling in video games quite like it. Number 4. Diablo 3's Auction House Oh god, this thing. Actually one of the most divisive mechanics in RPG history, Diablo 3's Auction House was either the key to supremely cool, uber-powerful weapons for a handful of coin, a way for you to profit with real cash for hard work and playtime, or both. Though it was shut down after two years of being in the game's PC build, Blizzard's auction house introduced a fascinating concept, at least to talk about. How much worth do in-game items have in the real world? And if you could sell the things that you've accrued over time, would you? What price would you put on a legendary axe as a quasi-product? Does it make you invest in your wares more, or are you suddenly playing the market with inflated markups and more dastardly thought processes? Such was the debate that surrounded Diablo 3, but the real game-breaking stuff centered on how you could bypass entire progression systems by just purchasing a better weapon in seconds. It's the same issue that arose around Star Wars Battlefront 2 with that game's star cards, though at least that was quickly put to bed. Actual ownership of digital weapons and items. Let me know down in the comments if you think developers should ever try this again. Number 3. The Last of Us Final Question there are many themes and comments made across The Last of Us hefty runtime, ranging from consumerism and commercialism to various breakdowns of what you might do when faced with the apocalypse. My personal favourite is the most overt one in the game, and what hangs at the centre of Joel's decision to save Ellie from the Fireflies. Primarily, is the life of one person you love worth more than millions you don't? Ask a room of people and they'll be split down the middle. My own wife answered no when I said yes, which was a great way for our evening to play out. Another genius decision on Naughty Dog's part was to not let you have any control over Joel in the scene itself. Instead, he takes a scalpel to the neck of one surgeon, so even if you don't then follow up by killing the remaining two, his role in the exchange still comes with a shocking amount of claret. This had the knock-on effect of grounding the ramifications of saving one life over another. There would always be bloodshed and violent reactions, things you'd have to factor in no matter which side you come down on. Number 2 living an entire fake life as Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I've covered the visceral side of Rockstar's cowboy games with John Marsden's death, but what about Red Dead Redemption 2 and the tale of Arthur Morgan? That, although its ending certainly veers in the same direction, has an appeal more rooted in utter simulation. See, Rockstar didn't just create more Red Dead. They practically coded an entire virtual reality simulation of the Old West without goggles. Everything from retrieving animal skins for your camp stew to watching beard hair grow, surviving in harsh weather to carrying grain from A to B or going fishing is rendered with a level of craftsmanship no other developer is anywhere near. It results in a level of roleplay we'd never seen, and you will want to live Arthur's life right. The way he's written and how the story pans out does let you conjure a custom fate, but that's after an immaculate narrative drive is established across those opening acts. Here, you're a cowboy on the run from the law, doing everything from trading haymakers in saloons to brushing the dust off your horse just to keep it happy. If you've devoted any number of hours to Red Dead Redemption 2, you'll know this indescribable feeling of true immersion. And for that, Rockstar should be applauded for making virtual reality without any additional equipment. Number 1. Horizon Zero Dawn's Impossible Question One of my all-time favourite philosophical questions any game has ever proposed. Horizon Zero Dawn dives headfirst into the quandary that is history being written by the victor, and repeating the mistakes of the past. Coming towards the close of the game when you're chasing after the pre-apocalyptic actions of one Ted Farrow and his company of murderous robots, it's accepted amongst those planning for the future that there should be some record of everything that went before. 
The crux of Horizon's world being mostly devoid of human life comes from a whole ton of scientists perishing over time underground, but leaving systems and archives in place so that Earth could be repopulated again. Said archives would be made up of everything from humanity's historical records to how buildings are constructed to how financial transactions work. Only in the moment where this plan is fully being put into motion, project lead Ted Farrow chooses to delete everything that came before, dooming the emerging humans to a life without information on their own species. Why? Because Farrow thinks that by including all these things, he's instead providing a rulebook on how to doom the Earth all over again. Think about it. Would you provide information on Agent Orange, the nuclear bomb, or any catastrophic event, assuming humanity would learn from its mistakes? Or have you just planted the idea in their heads? How much can you really trust human nature as a force for good, or do we all need saving from ourselves? And that is my breakdown of a whole bunch of times that gaming got way too real. Let me know down in the comments which other perplexing questions or scenarios really stuck with you. I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.